I'm Long Pan from Hustle Planner Institute, and I will talk about Turk Deck, physical virtual reality based on people. And as you can see, we use Oculus Rift, and the person is experiencing a virtual reality, and just to give you some sense, here's the third person view, and the person is balancing along the ledge. But in the reality, what really happened is that the person is walking around in the space, and that is empty, it didn't feel anything. So with this project, we asked, shouldn't there be a wall? And our SNC is yes. And I will tell you how we get the wall there. Four, B, two, B. Okay. So uh, with this, we are building very closely to something we showed uh, at Kai last year, our, our Hefty Turk, a motion uh, platform based on people. Uh, how it worked was that uh, there is one person, the person is in a horizontal position, and that person is uh, flying a hang glider in VR and held by a, uh, four people we call human actuator. And if you look at the wall, you can see what ha uh, the person is experiencing now, and there's this tornado ahead. ahead. Uh, the four people also look at the wall, but they are looking at the, those uh, motion instructions on the side. And what happened then is that the four people um, and yeah, the four people follow the motion instructions to throw out the player when the, just on time when the player hit the tornado and to create this kind of very intense mo uh, movement for the player. So our goal was to make uh, intense motion experience available to consumer market. And just to match all the rest of VR, that is already consumer friendly. And if you see the left column here, these are all things happening in the research in various stages. The graphics, the motion tracking, the head-mounted device. But all these have been uh, reached to the consumer market recently. So graphics with high-end high graphic card, motion tracking with Kinect, head-mounted device with Oculus Rift. And one thing that is not uh, working today is actuation. It's not working because it's mechanics. And there's just no more slow that can shrink the machine down to the uh, very small. The size of the machines is always proportional to the size of the, what they actuate. And that's why we think using human is the way to do it. On that note, the next step of our project is to apply our idea to the real working VR where people can walk freely inside of the virtual world. And many people in the past have used props, also known as uh, passive hapt haptics, to solve this. And here's an example from related work. Here's a person spraying on a, on a car body, and the car body on the left is the, actually in the virtual world. The person cannot touch it. And the only thing that user is touching is the spraying gun holding it on user's hand. And that actually is a physical object. And to make sure it m m uh, matches the virtual, virtual world, the person can feel something. It is attached to this very thin string come from any direct, uh, uh, different direction to make sure it's been tracked and can apply forces on it. And it adds a tremendous uh, realism for the user. And here's another system where people push the concept further. The room is completely full of props and it's, it's a special augmented reality system designed for military training. As a result, you can get more physical sense of the environment. And the reason this concept is going um, further for the massive market, here is the Void, which actually tries to make a VR version of the military training system of it. And these are all great, but there is a limitation. It requires one physical room for each virtual room, and which means every new experience requires a new room. So our goal is to do arbitrary virtu virtual room based on small set of props so we can just uh, reuse them to make a different kind of uh, environment. And that's exactly what uh, TurkDeck is doing. Physical virtual reality based on people, the same concept with uh, Haptic Turk. So for users, it's just a uh, real walking VR, graphics all around, and the users see things uh, inside of the head-mounted device. The users can feel and touch objects inside because there, the, there would be boards in reality which match the virtual world. But the, what really happened in reality is that is this. Only the objects that users can reach are presented. The objects behind the user are torn down by the human actuator and become the objects in front of the user. And we designed the system to specifically to fix set of the props. 
and every act uh, human actually can only manipulate one suitcase of the equipment, and all the objects in the virtual world are simulated by this. So let's talk about our props. Our prop set consists of a stick and a, sp and, and a board. It's a modular uh, system, so it can be folded or combined into different things. And the board consists of four elements, and there are magnets on the side to help aligning on the correct position when connecting to the other board. And it can be folded or combined to uh, form different objects, like uh, as, show, as you can see here. Uh, it can be opened up to become a wall, uh, lie down the ground to become a ledge, or combining them into a table or, or, or chair. We made two, of, uh, two versions of, of the board. We made a simple one from the styrofoam, uh, but very, from the styrofoam board, uh, it's very light and very easy to move around. But what you see here is a deluxe version. It's a hollow board made from an uh, IKEA table. And it feels nicer and much sturdier than the styrofoam board. But in exchange, it is heavier. The combined set is 12 kilograms, which is, but which is still manageable because we made some holes on the, on the side to help people to carry the board around. And these are all uh, are things in, is part of, this whole thing is, uh, is part of a system. As you can see, here is at uh, Hustle Platinum Institute. Here is, is the atrium. The user wears the marker head and tracked by the top camera. And by the way, this is not very, uh, the, the best way to do it. Uh, it's just a tracking uh, system from our previous project. The nice thing about the system is that the user can walk around freely. Uh, the player carry the notebook uh, in the backpack, and all wires from the Oculus Rift goes, to, uh, goes into the backpack. And the projection on the, on the ground is in the instruction for the human actuator, and it's projected from the laser proje uh, projector on, on the top. And the laser projector is uh, just a vector display, essentially just uh, is a device that was used in disco in the past, and, but we reprogram uh, this to pro project things we want. And there's a, a speaker system to give all, all the instructions to the human actuator, uh, human actuator as well. And here's how the system setting, set things up. Uh, here's the balancing beam, the beam, the thin board in the middle, is a, a board folded on the long edge and held by the packs of uh, boards around and then surrounded, uh, surrounded by the walls. And the process of being set up is like this. Here it says uh, human actuator uh, number eight sent here and arrange your boards uh, like so. And obviously uh, other numbers of, uh, and other shapes uh, tells the others where to go. All right, folding space. So in order to fit all this into a space with large ward, we use portal, me portal mechanism. Uh, and you probably have seen this before. We saw this from Valve. As you can see, the blue hole and uh, orange hole to teleport users to the other room. And using this mechanism allow us to for fold an arbitrary number of rooms into a fixed size of space. So if you go from this room to next room, it will still stay inside of the five meter by five meter uh, volume here. So we have arbitrary amount of space, but the space need to be made out of uh, five by five uh, meter segments because that's the granular, uh, granularity for the rooms. And we cannot make uh, 20 by 20 meters room. So next, let me walk, walk you through a couple of mechanisms in our systems. Uh, and you have seen this before. We are in the virtual reality here. And this is where the experience starts. The users stand on the ledge. As you can see, the users, uh, as you can see, the users here are off the ground because those boards are underneath. And the nice thing about this is that uh, the void behind the user forces him to touch the wall uh, in front of him, generating a haptic experience. And as the users start walking towards the left, the human actuator here will tear down the wall behind and becomes the ledge in front of the user. And let me just show a short clip of how, how things moved here. And it's the same scene, just rotated a 90 degree uh, to the left. And here, here, is the, here is the user, you can see that, and there's this ledge. And please also uh, notice that the human actuator number four will move to the next position according to the audio uh, instruction from the system. Four. 
B to B. And we can do a, a couple of simple things, like uh, the human address itself can be prop as well, like simulating a dead body here. <laughs> and, but here is a more interesting one. We, ha we have two interesting components. What, number one is interactive component, like the lever here. The user can grab the lever and pull it up and down because it's actuated by the human actuator. So it can actually become easy going or hard going or all types of uh, different haptic profile. And number two is the animated component. For example, here is a security system. The wall will start crashing the user when the user walk into it. And let's see how, how it works. So as the user walk into it, door will closing. C. And the two human actors the user as much as possible. And there are instructions on the ground to tell human actuator it's an animated component, like the small arrows indicating uh, the direction to move. And the wall instruction will be also animated to tell when and where the, the, to move the wall. The system also works with, without visual. We have a dark room that user can only explore by touching things around and move forward. All right, the most important thing in the system is timing. Now, we are doing real work in VR based on people, so the people is the main contribution of the work, but it's also the main limitation. The main limitation is that they are slow. Unlike machines, which can move very quickly and precisely, we need to deal with the constraint of a human. So in our system, the component to deal with the constraint is called scheduler. And what a scheduler does is to tell human actuator where, uh, where and when to go. And here I just give you uh, one example here. This is the one room we have seen in the beginning. The ledge is on the bottom and the user walks around into the room. So the first thing we do, and we actually do it manually, is we translate, uh, in, translate this into a physical setup of the board. So the blueprint on the right is exactly the same room, but only physical part of it and only made by, by the board. The next thing is we draw out how the user most likely gonna traverse the space and based on the path, we can decide what order the board should be set up. So, and by default, we just use a collider object, traverse this path, and get the order of the objects it collide and assign them to the corresponding human actuator. So it will be, so it will be like this. So the first is zero is here, one is here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then zero again, just move from the previous position to here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right, respectively. So in reality, it turns out it's not always the best, uh, so we still need to optimize, but still is working, uh, still, still work if you uh, want to stay like, uh, if you don't want to adjust anything. So next I'm going to uh, talk about complex uh, mechanism, which has more fun, but at the same time needs more, uh, multiple people and more time to build it. So one of the examples is the zip line here. Uh, where users can cli climb up uh, climb up, and then slide to the other side. But this takes five human, human actuators to assemble those sticks into this frame shown on the right, and takes quite a while. The user can outpace the system if we don't block him, so we need a delay mechanism. So we then added the door to block the user. At the same time, in order, in order to keep users busy, we made up a story that tells that it's a hydraulic door and you need to pump the water by pulling down multiple times of the lever in order to open this up. So the delay mechanism is just a easy to set up mechanism used to keep users busy and the human actuator can have more time to set up the zip line. And once the door is open, the user can ride on the zip line and slide to the other side. And by the way, it's another uh, animated uh, component that you should see and that he's sliding down in the virtual world, but in reality the user is not moving. And instead the wall is moving to towards the user. Another complex mechanism you have seen before is uh, uh, the wood beam, and the delay mechanism here is just uh, animate the wood beam from the bottom to the top. And we can have more time to say that. Okay, just, uh, let me just kick, uh, quickly uh, go through the study. We have a very uh, simple study. 
There are two conditions. One is the base condition without haptics, uh, passive haptics, and one is uh, it's, uh, test condition with haptic deck. And we recruit uh, even 11 participants and did it with, uh, with within su subject study. And the result is uh, uh, pretty positive. Uh, people rate the experience more fun than uh, in the Turkish condition with f uh, physical feedback. And that probably comes from the fact that it's perceived more realistic. And that is good for us. And here's one comment. What I mean is that it was realistic. Uh, it's truly fearful standing on the edge or before the fire. And the other said that touching real objects in the perceived virtual uh, environment was surprising. And keep in mind, this actually we just tested the quality of passive hapt haptics. But now the surprising part is that the human actor, actor actually feel it's, it's fun as well. And the reason is that, uh, like the comment here, it was surprising fun, especially for the right people. So it certainly has a, some, a social effect here. And yeah, but it's also tiring if you, uh, if you like to say. So let me just wrap it up very quickly. So the benefit is to, as we shown uh, in the beginning, the previous work requires one physical uh, room for uh, each uh, virtual, uh, virtual room. But Turk, Turk Deck enables simulating arbitrary large virtual world by just a finite set of props that can quickly set up anywhere. And on the flip side, there are limitations because humans are slow and get tired. But at the same time, it's more fun with people. So uh, just wrap up with the, the pattern here. We just hope that uh, the Turk Deck can uh, inspire more people because uh, this is just a pro uh, project we want to uh, explore. If it's, there are more possibilities we can make using human instead of machine and push this concept more further. Yeah, and thanks. And I would like to take any question. <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful talk. Again, if you have questions at the back or if you're close to the front, you can wave at me and you can grab my mic. Um, you talked a little bit about the need to redesign the, the experience, the software, based on the limitations of the system, like the, uh, the delay mechanism, mm -hmm. for example. But uh, now that you've had more experience and more time beyond the study to, to work with this, have you found that there are other ways that the experience has changed, that you find yourself authoring uh, particular experiences within the virtual worlds that you find work best, or new ideas the, of how to take advantage of these things or other limitations? So the limitation is still on the uh, resource management. Uh, so here, how to manage those people. So if we have enough people, then actually we can simulate any kind of uh, uh, components if, uh, if we have enough people. It's just like uh, we have enough memory to page things up, uh, page things in, or page things out. But um, in reality, I think uh, we are still exploring more uh, possibility to design the, uh, the virtual experience. And I think the delay mechanism is still very important to uh, make sure that the, the complex me mechanism still work with people because people still has the limitation of the speed. Yeah, so that's pretty okay. much it. Well, it looks like you're being mugged. We have time for uh, one more question here at the back. So uh, thanks. Uh, Walter Lasecki, uh, University of Michigan. So. Very cool stuff. Uh, I'm wondering, though, how complicated it is to, to train people to be the human actuators, right? You said mm. it was fun for them, but how long did it actually take to kind of get them started and have them understand the so instructions? So actually, I, uh, we spent uh, 30 minutes for uh, each human actu uh, actuator to tell uh, all the instructions about and how, how they move the things, how, how to fold the board. board. So it actually takes some, uh, some time to train the, the people, yeah. Okay. Great, thanks.